I actually lit a match and I put it on my arm to see how much it hurts. Yeah. And then I imagined that like all over my body for five minutes. And I like, this is unimaginable pain. I can't tolerate this for five minutes. How could I tolerate this for thousands of years? Mm -hmm. So I jumped out of the window in my school. Sweet. All right. How's it going? How are you doing today? Good, good. How are you? Pretty good. What did you, um, so you emailed me, or I think a third oh, party yes. might have emailed me. Yeah, about chatting about, um, I guess, basically Islam broadly, kind of, and then more specifically um, the, the threat you would say it poses to the, the greater world. Yeah, uh, yeah. my friend Vikram emailed, mm -hmm. uh, I think, and suggested this to both of us. Yeah, I mean, I sent you a list of things that we could talk about. The two that you, I think you picked the two. Uh, two. One of them was why Islam is worse than Nazism. Mm -hmm. And the other one was the um, the case against Islamic reform. Mm -hmm. And you know that one really bothers me. The more the people that are defending reforming Islam, you know, I don't think you can reform cancer. Um, oh, yeah. you well, just which one? Of... Where do you want to start? Uh, what, what, I mean, what do you prefer? We could talk about Islamic reform. I mean, do you have any views on yourself on this so I could um, r respond to it or like? Agree yeah, I mean, with you I would. Disagree with you? Um, I mean, I'm probably slightly in favor of, of some sort of reformation. Um, I don't know how much it would focus on religious aspects over other cultural aspects, um, but mm. yeah. Um, we, I so guess cultural gonna, aspect. Yeah. Okay, so there's there's a there's a very big difference between supporting cultural Muslims, which mm -hmm. is not really yet a thing, um, versus Islamic reform. Those are completely different things. When you say cultural Muslim, I'm completely in support of that because when you say the the two that does exist is cultural Christians and cultural Jews, right? Cultural Muslims is still not a big thing. Um, when you say cultural Christian or cultural Jews, you're talking about people who don't believe in Judaism or believe in Christianity, but they enjoy the rituals, the ceremonies, the communities, the gathering, the food. Um, and to me, the belief is the problem. The rituals are not the problem. So if you support cultural Christianity and cultural Judaism and makes it easier for people to understand that they could actually give up the nonsense give up believing in superstition and yet keep the things that makes them enjoy life more like all the um i mean you can enjoy harry potter for example without believing in harry potter it doesn't mm -hmm. you don't necessarily so that i am in full support of like i wish there was more of that in uh, cultural muslims who don't believe in islam i mean like, you've got like a decent amount of cultural muslims in like other countries in like western countries now I mean, arguably, even like in more extremist countries, you can argue that there are types of cultural Muslims, right? Like, for instance, like Saudi Arabia is historically seen as a pretty extreme country when it comes to how they, you know, run their system. But I mean, like a lot of those guys fly to other countries to party and drink and whatnot. I mean, for various reasons, right? But um, or, or like um, Muslims in America. Are, or, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Muslims in America, if you say you believe in Muhammad as a, uh, as a prophet of God and the Quran as a direct word of God and you believe in Allah, you're not a cultural Muslim. You believe this. Like, I have actually met, like, cultural Jews that are even rabbis, and, like, this is not very common, but I've met, like, I, there's rabbis that are like, oh, of course this is all fairy tale, uh, and there is no God, but we just, we, this is just a cultural thing for us. That's cultural Jew. Cultural Muslims, I haven't, I mean, there are examples I haven't seen Muslims that say like, oh, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Muhammad. I just go to aid because of the aid ceremonies because of the food. That would be awesome, right? Well, but there's got to um, be, there has to be like a middle ground, right? Where they're like, yeah, like I believe in Allah. I believe Muhammad was the prophet. I, maybe I don't 100% buy into every tenet of the Quran. Um, similar to how a Catholic might say, I believe that Mary was a virgin mother. I believe in Jesus, but I don't know how I feel about like the organized, the institution of the Catholic church or some other Christian you know, organization, right? Like, I'm sure there's like a middle ground there somewhere, no? Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. What, mm -hmm. what, um, first of all, there are many Muslims. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on one second. Your thing is. Follow, most Muslims do not follow. I'm sorry. Hello?
Sorry. Hear me? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Um, I, I closed on Twitch because I think there was too much stuff happening. Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, is everything good now, right? I think so. Yeah, it sounds good now. Okay, sorry. So, right. repeat your last statement, yeah. Okay, so I, here's the thing. There's a difference between abandoning parts of Islam and reforming Islam, okay? Okay. So, most Muslims do not follow Islam. Most Muslims, I say, are better than Islam, just the same way as most Christians are better than Christianity. And most religious Jews, like when I say religious Jews, I'm trying to separate them for people who call themselves Jews because of ethnicity. Mm -hmm. uh, most religious Jews are better than Judaism. Um, the fact that more, most Muslims are better than Islam, that's no credit to Islam itself. Their humanity or their better values or their sense of sympathy or other sources of uh, culture or influence or content has influenced them more than Islam could have. The, the, the influence of Christianity, Judaism, or Islam itself is always a negative influence, right? So when we when we keep pointing to Muslims and say like, oh, look at Muslims, look at all these Muslims. There are many Muslims who support gay rights. There are many Muslims who support women rights, equality, peace, secularism. There's tons of examples for that. But what, what reformers try to do is that uh, they try to t use these examples of good Muslims and be like, look, Islam can be reformed. And I always say, like, no, Islam cannot be reformed. Muslims can be reformed. Muslims get reformed by moving away from Islamic values. When you talk so, about Islamic reform, it's about change, looking at Islam differently yeah. and changing, uh, changing what Islam stands for. Yeah, so and as long as... Yeah, go on. I, I don't necessarily... I don't disagree with anything you said. Although, at some point, it kind of becomes like a, a matter of semantics, right? Um, so, so like, mm. I, I used to say this a lot when I was younger. Like, um, Christians in the United States haven't gotten... haven't turned into better people. Um, they've just become less Christian, right? It, it's kind of yeah, one I way agree. of looking at it. Yeah, of course. But, but I mean, like, from an institutional point of view, um, I mean, these churches still want to hold on to their rituals. They still want to hold on to their community. So, uh, and I mean, there are people that still want to be a part of a community and still want to be a part of like uh, some organization, you know, theology or not, that has all of these rituals and everything. So they, they have the religion. Um, so, I mean, like, it feels like broadly speaking, it's more beneficial to speak in terms of reforming the religion, even if what you're really doing is like fundamentally changing how people view it, no? Well, the, the problem with that is that as the religion itself is tied to a, a set of um, scripture that mm -hmm. is fundamentally against many progressive values right especially with islam right uh, in christianity there's some wiggle room you could be like oh this is not from god this is inspired by god um the you know the vast majority of muslims i mean i can you have to it's very hard to find an example of muslims who would disagree with me at right now saying that if you don't believe that the quran is a direct word of god verbatim word of god then you're not a muslim like, yeah. I mean, you could try to change the definition of who the Muslim is. Sure. But um, every Muslim believes that. Even, and I could tell you, the vast majority of Muslims have never read the Quran. Same with Christians. Do, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they do believe that the Quran is the direct word of God. Same with Christians, kind uh, of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and, and this is a very problematic book. I mean, this is a book that promotes slavery, it's anti woman um, it teaches you that you should, you should, not you could, you should beat your wife in certain situations. Sure, but like, e even if we look at what you've like just said there, right, in terms of like the Quran is anti women right, there are six mm -hmm. Muslim majority countries that have had a female like leader, for, like prime minister or president yeah, of their country, Muslims. right? So, yeah, so You're it, talking, that's the difference between Muslims and Islam. Sure. It just seems like that semantic distinction is going to make things like really confusing for a lot of people. Like these people would probably still consider themselves not. Muslims, not just culturally, but the, even religiously. I didn't sorry. say they're not Muslim. Okay, so the, the you, okay, so just because you don't follow Islam, that doesn't make you not a Muslim. The requirement for you being Muslim is very small. You just have to believe in God as a, Allah as God and Muhammad as his prophet and the Quran as a direct word of God. Even if you don't follow the Quran, I mean, even in Islam, you learn that a lot of Muslims are going to end up in hell. The fact that Muslims are going to end up in hell means that these are Muslims who do not haven't followed Islam. Not following Islam doesn't make you not a Muslim. It makes you a bad Muslim. Okay. And a, a bad Muslim is technically a good person. <laughs> but sure, I would say the same with a bad any any like um, what, yeah any religion is what I would say. That's yeah, why so. that's why I say that about Christianity as well. Like I say, like oh look at Christianity. They have mellow, Christianity has mellowed down. It's much less problematic than it used to be i like no christianity will always be a barbaric violent backwards anti-science anti-human anti-jewish anti-woman anti-gay religion it will always be that as long as it has anything to do with the bible 
Christians have reform by being more influenced by non-Christian values, science, uh, by science. being influenced by other sources, and by abandoning Christianity, by, by, by making Christianity a less influence in their uh, judgment. So Christians have reformed. Christianity has not reformed. Right, and it has, and if you know, a lot of Muslim ref, uh, more reformers keep pointing to Christianity, like the Reformation movement, as an example of what we want for Islam, and that's horseshit because the Reformation movement actually uh, didn't achieve much when it comes to de-radicalization of Christianity. In fact, if you look at a lot of Protestants, they're more radical than the Catholics. Yeah, it well, and also Christian Reformation was in the that was literally like the 1500s. So I mean, like when people talk about Christian reform, like a lot of the positive progressive values we've seen have come in the last like hundred years from Christianity, not in the not from the 1500s, right? right. Right, and also the Enlightenment movement, which came a lot yeah. after, mm -hmm. right? And the Enlightenment movement was not a movement that came like, hey, let's look at Bible and read it in a different way, and let's pretend like these verses that are so uh, evil mean something else. That was not the Enlightenment movement. Enlightenment movement, was, to some extent, was completely anti-religious. And in other aspects of it, it, was, it came up with better ideas, sup values superior to Christianity that were competing against those values. It wasn't like, hey, let's... Uh, re lie to people, and this is what I have a problem with the Reformation movement as uh, the as modern Islamic Reformation movement, because we have other Reformation movements before that as well. Is that it involves lying to people? What what ref what reforming in Islam requires is for you to tell Muslims that hey, look, this verses that is clearly saying that like you should beat your wife if she's disobedient, it means something else. Okay, it means actually something else. Let's read it in a different way. And it requires lying to people. But when it comes to the methods that actually work, which is intellectually honest, is either promoting skepticism or it's uh, promoting values superior to uh, Islamic values, which has and will continue to influence Muslims. I mean, it's very interesting because even the leaders of the reform movement, if you look at their their own history and the way that they became de-radicalized, when, when you read their stories and their books... It wasn't because they read the Quran one last time in a different way and were like, oh my God, this book is completely actually pro-peace and anti-violence. No, it was other people, other sources of influence and other non-Islamic books that changed their mind. And now even though they changed their mind based on other sources, they're prescribing to radical Muslims as something completely different from how they became de-radicalized. They're, like, they're telling them, hey, this actually let's read the Quran in a different way. Like That hasn't even worked on you. Why are you using this method? Well, I mean, like, my guess is going to be that, like, there are going to be some exceptional people that might skepticism their way out of their particular religion, but it's probably not reasonable to expect that everybody would. Otherwise, there would be no religious people left, right? We have unprecedented access to information in this day and age. There's no real good reason to be, um, you know, like a, a super religious person unless, you know, you just don't, you, you, you want to be, right? Like... But I'm not saying out, like, I'm not advocating for, like, oh, you either have to become an atheist or it's not good enough. Um, I'm, I'm saying that Muslims and Christians and Jews, just like every, the, every one of us, is influenced by many sources of ideas, right? Yeah, it's course. not Muslims are not just like, oh, let, let me t see what Islam says, what the Hadith says, what the Quran says, and I'm just going to do that. They're influenced by the podcast they listen to, by the YouTube videos they watch, by the um, books they read, by their parents, by their school. Um, and what I'm saying is that the, the liberal Muslims that are out there it's not because of the, any Islamic reform or rereading of the Quran that they have become liberal. It's because of these other sources of influence that they have become liberal. And what the Muslim reformers do is that they go to these progressive or liberal Muslims after you've already been convinced of superior values to Islam, and they're like, hey, guess what? The, the values that you're now um, following, these are actually according to Islam. They come and try to take credit for it after. And the only thing that, the only benefit that that might uh, provide is the comfort to these Muslims that, okay, you're not being anti-Islamic. But I tell you that you don't owe that comfort to these Muslims. I don't, none of these Muslims are going to go like, oh my God, I guess I have to beat my wife. If, I, if, I, if any of these Muslims con are confronted about what Islam stands for, by the way, we're confronted, I mean, if, they're, if they welcome it. Like, I'm, I don't go to Muslims who will, do not want to be talked to or do not want to be challenged. And I tell them like, oh my God, you believe in a lie. If, 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 I, if a Muslim gives me their green light and wants to have a discussion, and if I tell them actually Islam stands for against all of these values that you're promoting, uh, they're not going to be like, okay, I guess I'm going to join ISIS tomorrow. That's not like, I, have, I give more credit to Muslims than a lot of 
these Muslim reformers do. They have already been convinced that this is not the right way to live. And the reaction to you challenging them on what Islam actually stands for is either they ignore you uh, or like they have this tr or maybe they're convinced and they have this struggle in their in their mind and they're uncomfortable about it. A lot of them end up leaving Islam and we have been very successful with that. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of them, you know, some of them might try to go out and find these reformers to tell them why they're actually good. They are actually following Islam. And that's just for the sake of comfort that they are still Muslim. And I think like that's a missed opportunity. I mean, that, that discomfort that the Muslims are feeling is not, it's not, you know, it's not something that we need to get rid of. The discomfort is a good thing. Um, and by, by trying, by getting them to get the easy route out by feeling comfortable and making like, okay, this is Islamic. You're not actually de-radicalizing people. These people were already de-radicalized or never were radical to begin with. Um, all you're doing is you're making the challenge against Islam harder because more good people are now calling themselves Muslims. And by, not, by inflating those numbers, you are uh, giving legitimacy to a barbaric backward ideology that needs to die needed to die yesterday um and you know this is the problem with islam um compared to like shitty ideologies like nazism they enjoy these big numbers they enjoy a lot of good people endorsing it which gives it legitimacy and authority for a fringe bad actors to be able to do a lot even though they're fringe use the legitimacy and authority of it to go into power to create theocracies and to do a lot of damage using that authority yeah, that so these good I, yeah, yeah go ahead. I, I understand what you're saying but i i guess like the problem is that like um i guess when i think of these types of ideologies what i'm more concerned about is like what is it what is a realistic path to success like wh wh how can we act in such a way that we can convert the maximum number of people and right. i don't think there's ever I, I could be wrong my history is really bad but i don't think in the history of mankind there's ever been like a movement where everybody was like ah oh, let's abandon our faith it seems Everyone, more like what what's happened that's true what, mm. It seems like more sure. what's happened is that people have slowly over time while maintaining their mm -hmm. faith have kind of modernized their views, even if they couldn't really justify that with whatever particular scripture they were reading. Um, so like Christians are a good example, like even Catholics, for instance, you know, like there are a lot yeah. of crazy beliefs that even strict Catholics probably don't believe in. Um, Catholicism is my background. So for instance, there's something called transubstantiation. The idea that when, when the, when the um, priest blesses the uh, the wine and and the bread he's that's actually becoming actually the the body and blood of Christ not a metaphor but really it actually is there's a lot of hardcore Catholics that are like would consider themselves very Catholic that don't actually believe that's true like okay well maybe it's not actually you know so it feels like what happens over time is that people's views kind of modernize they kind of sort of pick and choose the most convenient parts of the scripture and then they move on and that seems to be a better path forward than just expecting everybody to be like oh you're right my religion is shit no. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you, but I'm saying the source of that gradual movement is not trying to reinterpret the, uh, the Quran or the Bible. There's, those, those, that reform movement, those kind of reform people, after people have already changed their mind or be, been de-radicalized, they come in after people have become prog uh, progressive or liberal, and they try to take credit for these people, right? The, the same way, like, people... Uh, a lot of people on the right say, oh, look at these Western countries. The reason why they're advanced is because of Judeo-Christian values. Well, it has had nothing to do with that. It was because of the Enlightenment value. Well, sure, but uh, like, I'm, I'm but, sure that what happens is it's probably like they, these things probably go hand in hand with each other. No, uh, no, they don't. I'm t like, here, the, here's the thing. When it comes to the gradual movement, people are like, oh, like some people call me like an atheist uh, radical because I, it seems like I'm saying like I, I want atheism and nothing else. Nothing else short of abandoning Islam is good enough. No, I'm all for baby steps. I'm just for intellectually honest baby steps. Skepticism does work, and it actually is more practical. The reform, the reform Islam movement, what they have to do is they have to go pick up the Quran, and they have to go over every single verse that has is problematic, and be like, okay, this verse actually means something else, and this verse actually means something else, and then go through the Hadith, which is a thousand times more content than the Quran, and do that with every single Hadith that is problematic as well. And they have to come up with gymnastic arguments that is not even going to sell because Muslims, guess what? Most Muslims can read. But um, but when it comes to skepticism, which is another gradual uh, movement, it's baby steps. You want baby steps? I have baby steps. All you have to do is like, hey, okay, you believe in God? Why? 
Like, and oh, you believe Muhammad was the prophet? You believe the Quran is the direct word of God? How do you know that? Like, are you sure? Could you be wrong? That is a, so, so much more practical. And you Isn't say, this, like, oh, in terms of what you're talking about, though, in terms of like taking verses and like reinterpreting them for like modern day life, isn't this exactly what you would find happening like in any religious building ever? Like, isn't that why we go to temple or to church or to mosque is to have a, a priest or a preacher or, um, I don't remember the call in Islam, but like basically tell you like, oh, well, this is the text and this is how it relates to our lives and this is how we ought to live. Like, isn't that kind of the so, point? What I'm saying is that the Muslim that is looking for somebody to tell them that the Quran is not in favor of wife beating, that's a person that doesn't want to beat their wife. And if another Muslim comes to them or even, and especially an atheist comes to them and tells them, Actually, no, this does mean you should beat your wife. They're not going to go tomorrow and start beating their wife just because he, mo most Muslims never read the Quran. Most Muslims don't, let alone the Hadith. The Hadith is, most Islamic teachings actually come from the Hadith, not even the Quran. Sure, but... And it, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is that, like, when I, so earlier I said these things probably go hand in hand. When, when I said that, what I meant is that, like, religious leaders, as culture shifts, probably instruct the, the members of their... Um, um, congression, concession. Wait. What am I looking for? Uh, the um, the congregation. The congregation. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably yeah. start to address them in more progressive manners as well. So, for instance, when Catholics started to notice how big like gay movements were getting in the United States, you know, mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden we started to get hate the sin, not the sinner, right? Where now gay people were kind yeah. of sort of like you know welcomed into these larger um, <clears throat> clergy. I guess you would say that they were welcomed into the church with the understanding like, okay, well we're not necessarily pro gay rights, but like we're not going to hate you just because you're gay. And I'm sure that like the preachers preaching that also probably went along with you know the culture moving as well and it helps everybody kind of like move along together no right so what i'm saying is that that itself is not an attempt to change people's values that's a defense mechanism again uh, for keeping their religion relevant in response to people already changing their values right so that, that, that's a defense mechanism. And I think that the reason why these reform movements are a problem is because we don't want to give religion a defense mechanism. Yeah, but then we it sounds like you're talking about pay, making people into atheists then. What? Then it no, sounds no, like no. you're talking about making people into no, atheists. That's what it sounds no, no, like no, what you but, just said. No, because what I'm saying is that you are defeating Islam in one Muslim if, the, if Islam goes from 10% influence to 5% influence in one Muslim, even if they're still Muslim, even if they still consider themselves Muslim, if you reduce the influence of Islam in one person, you are still winning. I'm not saying they should be an atheist. Let me let me give you an example of how sometimes they might feel like, you know, let's just lie to people about their... This is basically uh, replacing some fairy tales which we see as problematic or dangerous mm -hmm. and replacing them with different fairy tales as atheists were so pretty like oh let's let's just tell them a different lie which might be less harmful and i'm like why would we need to f lie to people we don't need to lie to people well, because some people fact, need to be religious right i mean i'm okay with that replacing a, a less harmful fairy yeah. tale so for but instance saying, the, the, like yeah. the story of adam and eve right is ridiculous mm -hmm. in my opinion a ridiculous fairy tale if somebody wants to say well that didn't really happen that's like a metaphor for how god created the planet well fine fuck it that's fine i think it's just as stupid but sure i mean that's fine at least that doesn't give you harmful views on like science or the creation of the world or something Right. The, well, the thing is that even if you want mo more of those interpretations, that comes as a result of people challenging religion, not because of people. Re they, the rereading of the scripture is a defense against people who are challenging religion outright. So even if you want more of those interpretations, the, the best way to get those is not to just go out and encourage rereading, it's to just tell them why Christianity is bullshit. That's, you will get more of those in response. Right. So here's one, one, one example that I often give about why uh, lying to people for the sake of as greater good seems. Um, so to some people might get, uh, feel like, oh, you're going to get b better results, in the, um, you know, for some people, because some people are not just ready for the truth. The example I give is like, imagine if you have a, a village which is a, struck by a disease and this doctor happened to just show up in this village and she notices the disease and she comes up with the medicine and actually the medicine ends up working but to make more of it she's trying to sell it uh, to make more money to make more of the medicine and people are not buying it so she comes up with a lie and she said like guess 
hey people, I on my way to the village, there was these fairies in the forest, and the fairies to the forest gave me this potion, and she told me that this will help you eradicate the disease. And then after she comes up with the story, let's say people line up and they buy uh, they buy the medicine, and she raises enough money to make more, and she eradicates the disease from the village. And people are like, oh, look, this is a great example. Sometimes maybe lying to people might actually be beneficial for getting rid of um, a harm. So, but here's the thing: imagine after she left the village. Then other people come around and say, like, oh, guess what? I also talked to the fairy. And now that she left and she established that the fairy, uh, forest fairies are a real thing. And now she cre created a platform where other people could build on this mythology. And other people are now going to come and take advantage of it. Like, hey, the fairy, uh, the forest fairies told me that the these also make you have better sex or perform better um you know at work or keep you awake or whatever so and then all of a sudden people are selling a whole bunch of fake drugs and making a lot of money and some people actually might start putting drugs and making people addicted to it They're like hey fair, forest fairy so me so you once you establish a lie and people believe in it you you have a gullible community of people that are just ready there for um bad actors to take advantage of yeah i don't disagree she... but if we're talking about religious people they're already gullible mm -hmm. and ready for lies right i, I mean I, I i imagine if we're both yeah if we're both atheists i, I would imagine mm -hmm. we would probably both be in agreement that religious people are already gullible or susceptible to stories or fairy, fairy tales that fit their existence right the matter the, the fact of the matter is is that there are some people that in in a desperate search for meaning or for some greater purpose in life are always going to to cling on to things that can give them that atheists can never give you that it will never be able to give you that you're not going to find objective meaning in life outside of some mm. god figure and if you need that well fuck if you're going to listen to bullshit fairy tales at least you can listen to one with some better outcomes so if it takes forest fairies to convince you to give some medicine to your village yeah it's not a very good predictive thing you're likely to believe dumb shit in the future but at the very least you can believe on the penicillin forest fairies and then you can try some homeopathic shit later but i mean it's like one step at a time you slowly reform people's fairy tales until they're more in line with what we believe to be scientifically true and that's just how like religion makes progress over time you don't get these huge waves of atheists you get people that slowly reform their beliefs become I less religious and that seems i mean that would seem to be the case how it goes but I, I didn't say like a wave of atheists. I, I'm already saying that no, um, I, I believe in baby steps. But skepticism actually does work. Just asking people how they know things, even with the like gullible people, could be less gullible, become just a little bit less gullible. That really does work. I mean, I've seen it, seen it work. You only have to make a person that believes 100% in Islam or another religion to to go from 100% to 99%. People are less likely to devote make big sacrifices to their religion if they're only 99 percent sure about it like if that if that doctor spent more time trying to educate people for why this works it might have seemed like the return on investment is low uh, is small in the short term but on the long on the long term i believe that spreading truth and fighting against lies might not seem like a good idea in the short term but on the long run it gives you much higher return on your investment right and you owe people not to lie to them I think you you know you you don't like this is why I don't understand atheists who are for Islamic reform. I, I mean, for Muslims who believe in Islamic reform, I forgive them because to me they 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 believe that they're spreading the truth. But for atheists to be like, okay, this is a lie, but it's fine. Let's lie to people anyways because this might be beneficial to us. I think that's that seems selfish to me. That feels like we like let them believe in their own bullshit as long as they're not bombing us. Who cares what? They, who cares? If they're like, you know, other people might. Be, I mean, for their own sake, I think we should uh, fight, make them less gullible. I, I mean, so for example, like palm reading, right? Palm reading seems like a superstition that doesn't cause any harm. I don't see any people waging war against each other because of palm reading. But if you believe in palm reading, you're you're a type of person that also is going to believe in you know, vaccines cause autism. And that is a harmful idea. Like, so if I could convince you why you need to be more skeptical for against palm reading, that you might just be encouraged to be skept more skeptical in general. If you allow harmless beliefs without evidence, you're also opening the door to harmful nonsense without evidence. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with any of that, of mm. course. Like, okay. this is why I'm an atheist, and it's why, like, pre predictiveness is the most important part of a person's belief system, right? If you believe a certain dumb thing, can I predict that you'll believe other stupid things in the future? I, I Obviously, I believe that, um, being an atheist. Mm -hmm. I, I guess maybe, um, maybe you're just a little bit more hopeful 
um, in terms of like people's ab ability to just abandon parts of their religion. Um, but for me, I, it's so anecdotal. I wish I had like better examples. Well, I mean, we can look at whole countries sometimes, I guess. But like, um, it, it just it feels like yep. it's easier to tell somebody like, listen, um, like God actually meant this. Instead of saying like, okay, well, this is bullshit. Like, just get rid of this part of your bullshit ass religion, and you can keep the rest of your bullshit religion. But like, at least know this is fake. Like, it seems like it's so much easier to phrase things in a way that um, that somebody else would understand within the context of the religion than to do it outside the context of the religion. Well, we have the number. We have, and we're an atheist republic. By the way, atheist republic is um, the world's largest atheist community right now. Right. So we have two million followers around the world and we deal with talking to religious people and try to con convince them out of their religion all the time sure. and we uh, by the way check us out on YouTube because our YouTube is very tiny our Facebook page is 2 million followers but our YouTube doesn't seem to grow for some reason so uh, help us out there but um, but yeah but uh, we like it, we have seen you know we have actually experienced thousands of people abandoning their religion but even the numbers show that like the numbers show that that people are abandoning uh, like you're talking about muslims in united states actually muslims in united states shows you how powerful the exposure to other competing ideas is because muslims in the united states live less in a bubble than muslims in like islamic country mm -hmm. and we have like a 25 percent rate based on that was amazing i couldn't believe see i was shocked to see that the new generation of Muslims, second generation Muslims in the United States, 25% are abandoning Islam. I, I did not, I didn't even, like, I'm very optimistic, and to me that number seemed to, to uh, higher than I could have ever imagined, right? Sure, yeah. But even the, pe even the Muslims who remain Muslim but live liberal lives or progressive lives, if you go challenge them about the meaning of the Quran and the Hadith, they don't even know what's in the Quran and the Hadith. So how are they? Nobody came to them and be like, hey, don't beat your wife or be for gay rights because the Quran is for that. Like, they don't even know. How, so why are people saying like, hey, the, the, this, this might actually help um, more Muslims be liberal when if you actually talk about talk to them about the Hadith and Quran and they have no clue what's in it. So it's, that is not why they're liberal. If they don't know what's in there, reinterpreting the Quran or the Hadith cannot be the source of why they're liberal. Yeah, of course. I don't disagree. That, that's why I said it was kind of like, a, I bring back to that earlier phrase I made where I said hand in hand, that like it's more like exposure to culture, exposure to different values or whatever, exposure that's to different people over time probably like modernizes yeah. your views more. That's why I say the best way to fight against Islam is to befriend Muslims. This is why a lot of people think like, oh my God, Armin wants Islam to die. He's an anti-Muslim bigot. And like, do you know how I suggest, like fighting Islam requires convincing people out of their ideology. To convince people out of their ideology, you have to get their guards down. To get their guards down, you have to actually reach out to them and talk to them as friends. This is the complete, like the best strategy is actually the uh, complete opposite of bigotry. Like, but yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, but but you yourself are acknowledging that they are changing your opinions because they're exposed to better ideas, not because somebody is rereading the Quran to them in a different way. Yeah, of course. Why would we endorse? Okay, so why would we endorse this book then? We don't need to like tell them like, oh, this is actually a good book. I mean, th I mean, this is a god one, but I'm going to do it anyways. Imagine if people say like, hey, what if we instead of telling people why Nazism is shit. Why can't we just like read Mein Kampf and be like, hey, this actually might mean something else? Maybe the uh, maybe when maybe when people were talking about the Aryan race, you know, they were talking about our inner humanity. Anybody, everybody, all black people, Jews, they all have their own inner Ar Aryan that they could tap into. Let's just read it that way. Let's revise history and make Hitler, for example, a good person. You know. There might be some Nazis that could just remain Nazis, but if we just read Nazism to this, you know, they could actually be not racist. They could be um, progressive Nazis that yeah, actually read Yeah, but I think Nazism. I think you could That's... do that. Like, I, I think there's actually yeah. evidence that that already happens. Look how many people are like neo Nazis today that are that are like Slavic and have no fucking idea that like Hitler would have executed, or how many Polish people or whatever in the Western world um, can, can be like with a Polish descent or whatever that are literal Nazis because they completely and totally reinterpret and review all of that and just like religious people who've never read the Quran or never read the Bible these guys haven't read Mein Kampf um, in the original German or let alone a translation or even like an annotated version of it um, so yeah I mean I think that even with Nazism I think it would be possible to get a totally there's different a set of beliefs out of it yeah 
there's a difference between just being happy that somebody has better values than Nazism and has never read the Mein Kampf mm -hmm. than to actually chase Nazis and tell them, hey, actually go read the Mein Kampf, but let's, let, me, let me tell you and follow it, but let me tell you that it actually means something else than it actually means. Those are two different things. Like, that's not a good idea. Hey, actually, yes, Mein Kampf is good. Follow it, but I mean, let me like, read so it like, to you in a different way. Yeah, so the problem is that, like, this is, like, so recent that it's easier to argue against. But, like, if we were to envision a world where we were a thousand years removed from Hitler, like we are from Muhammad or uh, Jesus or any other figure like that, right? If we were to envision that future world um, and, mm -hmm. and instead we had Hitler instead and, like, let's say there were – how many Muslims are there? Is it, like, 2.1 billion? Yep. 1.8 1.8 billion Muslims in the world, right? Um, if we went to, mm -hmm. to, a, to a world where there were 1.8 billion Nazis, maybe instead of being like Hitler was bullshit, all this shit was bullshit, maybe it would be better to be like, hey, look, like we can have black Nazis and we can have whatever. It's like it sounds silly, obviously, because of the because we have a different context for Hitler. But that might actually be the way to go rather than you just tell, tell people like blanket, like, no, this was wrong or this didn't work or whatever. Yeah, but the problem it is when if you have a billion Nazis that are act Nathan not racist, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but if you have a billion Nazis that are actually not racist, what they're doing is that they are now making it much easier for more racists to use the, the authority that these high numbers of Nazis given to Nazi ideology. You will have just right now where we have more like we don't have any Nazi regimes right now. That are, right, but we do have Islamic theocracies because because of the legitimacy and um, the authority that the Quranic scripture has. Mm -hmm. So even if we lived in a world where there were a billion Nazis and they didn't actually believe the with Nazi values, they just were nominal Nazis, just like most Muslims are just nominal Muslims. It will in that world it would be easier to have. Nazi regimes that actually will use the real meaning of the text to oppress people. Sure, but like, so uh, isn't isn't Jordan the, uh, the country or Jordan? Um, isn't that country like still like theocratic or like monarchy or whatever? And that's like monarchy, uh, not theocratic. Okay, but I mean, they respect Islam and all that shit. But theocratic, theocratic, I'll probably say Saudi Arabia and Iran are good examples for theocratic. sure. Okay, because it feels like there are there are still even there are some Muslim majority countries that are relatively progressive with their values. Like I think Jordan was technically one of the first countries in the world to legalize gay marriage, although whether or not it was acceptable. Yeah, but, the was, but was it because of Islam? Well, no, but that's, no. this is what I'm saying. No, I, thanks to Islam. I mean, here's I, you want examples like that. Let's go to the best. Uh, the time where Muslims had it the best. They call it the so-called golden age of Islam. I don't call it the golden age of Islam. I call it the golden age of Arabs and Persians because it had nothing to do with Islam, right? There's nothing in Islam that made that empire great. It was... The, if you look at, for example, every yeah, other I, I agree, empire... I agree 100%. Yeah. It's because they're okay, they're okay. betraying those core values. I've, I've said the same thing about Christians forever, of course. Right, um, right, I, right. I, I guess it just it doesn't feel effective um, from a rhetorical point of view to tell somebody... Like, how, like how do you begin to have a conversation then with, um, with somebody that wants to be a moderate Muslim? How do you have a conversation mm -hmm. with them to say like, hey, like this is why you oh. should embrace your moderate values without it just sounding like you're telling them to become an atheist? Because I, I know that you're saying that's not what you're well, saying, but that's what I keep hearing, I guess. Well, this is, okay, this is what I would say to Muslim. Before before I talk to him, there's different kinds of Muslims, so I have to know what kind of Muslim I'm dealing sure. with. But usually- We'll say like a first... Western world, like a first generation immigrant Muslim in like America, or, or maybe a right. second generation, like their parents are Muslims and they came from a, a country like Iraq or something. Right. The first thing I would do is try to get their guard down and uh, try to convince them before I even attack Islam. I would try to convince them why my attack on Islam is not anything uh, against Muslims. Right. And the way I, so that would be the first step. And the way I would okay. do that is by showing them how it's possible to be against atheism without being anti-atheist. I like I tell them to imagine an, a Muslim who really wants to eradicate atheism. She hates atheism. Uh, she has made her life mission to end atheism. And they usually start interrupting here like, oh, I don't want to end atheism. I'm like, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking, imagine a Muslim that wants to do that. And the reason why she wants to do that is because she really loves atheists. And she's worried for them. She doesn't want them to burn in hell. And she's worried for their soul. And the reason why she's against atheism is because for their sake, right? So do you see how somebody could be very much against atheism but not for not against atheists. In fact, she's doing she's anti-atheism because she cares for atheists. And usually that gets their guard down to see like, okay, it's possible to be against an ideology without being against the people. So that would be my first step, right? Mm -hmm. The second step is like it would be to tell them, like, by the way, I don't think I'm 
I'm I'm not 100 percent about certain about my position. I just think Islam is dangerous, but I could be completely wrong. And if I'm wrong, I hope you could correct me. And I hope you could convince me that uh, I hope you could convince me because I don't want to burn in hell. So I hope that if you are right and I'm wrong, you manage to like, uh, I'm hope uh, so. And I also try to get them to admit, and this is usually when you hit a higher failure rate, usually you could get them to this part that to convince them that there is a chance that they could be wrong. Right. I always tell them like, okay, so do you believe that, are you like, do you have godlike knowledge? Like, you're not God, so you can't know everything. And given that, you, do you agree that you have a faulty logic, like everybody other than the God that you believe in could make mistakes? And given that you are capable of making mistakes, are you able to say that you hold any position 100%? Like, this is how I try to get them to become a, admit that there's a chance that they could be wrong. Usually they say, like, no, I could be wrong about other things, but with Islam, there's no way that I'm wrong. But this is how I start a conversation, right? Here's another, here's another baby step. Even if I can't, I, by the way, I do get a lot of success on this. Like, a lot of people become more skeptical about their positions using this. But even when people that go from being 100% sure that Islam is true to remaining 100% sure that Islam is true. Part of the purpose of these conversations is to get them to, okay, yeah, Islam is true and atheists are ridiculous and uh, to, okay, no, Islam is 100% true, but I see why somebody would be an atheist, right? That's that's a huge win in my book because that will require, that, that position will encourage more tolerance I feel like, so i could be wrong right. but like so earlier you were mentioning how like the only moderate muslims are the muslims that would have been open to hearing like moderate arguments anyways um no I, did i say that yeah well you kind of said that like if you find a muslim and you're able to convince them that like well maybe beating your wife or whatever is wrong or whatever um they're not believing that that's wrong because of islam they're doing it because they already would have had like some kind of moderate beliefs right yeah. Yeah. But what I I did I did because of their own sense of kindness. Yeah. Because exactly. Yeah. For, because for some because... reason that's not necessarily religious. Yeah. I mean, like when you're yeah. talking, if you can get a Muslim to admit that they might be wrong about the Quran, that's like ninety nine percent mm -hmm. of the battle already, right? The big deal about like. Yes. Yes, and guess what? It doesn't require me lying about anything. Well, yeah, but I feel that, like that... most Muslims, if they're well, most like theocratic religious ones, like what we're talking about, are never going to admit that the the, the Quran oh, no, is literally like the the text from God, right? More so even than the than the Christian scripture. Right, but we have had success with this, a lot of success with this. Yeah, but you don't think this maybe the success that you have with that is literally just people that were already basically on, on the road to being skeptical? Like, Because how would you respond I mean, to somebody that says, like, the Quran is the holy word of God, not written like loser Christians think, yeah, but, but actually, like, transcribed by God himself? How do you convince yeah, those that, people that, that, like... Yeah, but that they could be wrong. But here's the, that's why I also mentioned that even a smaller baby step than skepticism is to see why somebody some deluded people might be atheists just to tolerate our position that's also a win but but these i i can tell you like the, what i'm telling you is not just like theor theoretic we the number of people that are abandoning islam or questioning islam is way 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 higher than what the reform movement has anything to show for like the number of i haven't i i can't count the number uh, uh, the number of people on one hand i can't count the number of people that say like oh i was a radical and i was convinced by reform arguments that i shouldn't be radical I there like I, entire I countries though that are kind of sort what? of like moderating over time, like Tunisia no, or Turkey. Like, aren't these countries still have a lot of Muslims in there, but they're like their values over time have become a lot more moderate. Yes, but not because of Islam. That's what I'm saying. What the reform movement has to show is not the radicals that have become progressive because of competing or better ideas. What the reform movement has to show is Muslims who are live liberal because of reform arguments. Reform arguments do not work and they don't make sense because they are they involve lying to people and I mean Muslims are uh, are not idiots <laughs> to be fair to Muslim they can tell like if they actually go open their book and read it which I want them to do there's new studies that actually shows that more people who read the Quran question their religion even more right so you know the idea that actually you know here's the thing the reform movement actually helps people stop questioning you just put them in a comfortable position you do had some discomfort and that discomfort was so valuable because now they might have gone done some research and investigate investigations and come up to, come up with the truth but you're just like hey no stop stop 
let me just put you at ease, be comfortable, Islam is okay with all of this, and go live by your life, and you don't need to think about it anymore. I'm saying that's that was such a missed opportunity, right? That's what the, the reform arguments don't actually work in making people think about anything. It's actually a, a movement that helps people stop thinking rather than challenging. Hey, am I here? Gotcha. Okay. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. Sure. Oh, did I get cut off? No, no I right? hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I mean, we have, I mean, you mentioned Tunisia. Tunisia is a great example. Tunisia is a great example. Tunisia, look at all the secular activists and atheist activists or uh, f feminist activists and um, all the people that are working there and challenging the theocrats there and the Islamists there. They're, they're, they, these activists in Tunisia, they're not, they're not, you know, using the Quran, right? They, look at why is Tunisia different than Islam, than, than, sorry, than Iran and Saudi Arabia. It's not because of the reform movement. They have been influenced by, by other sources of influence, by better literature, by better uh, philosophy. Yeah, I guess like we're not connecting on this, right? Because we're just missing it. Because like even so, in like Tunisia, like like ninety nine percent of the people there are Muslim, and like the government itself like serves as like the protector of Islam. Like you have to be Muslim to be like a, like a president in Tunisia. Like it seems like and that's the best you could hope for, I guess. Tunisia is like even in in the best. Of, this is how bad Islam is. That even in the most liberal Islamic countries, you still have um, such anti secular governments like that. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, if you look at here's here, let me give you two two examples. Right. Mm -hmm. You you look you, you're talking about Tunisia, but think of uh, Iran and Turkey. Turkey during Ataturk and Iran during Reza Shah. I mean, Iran during Reza Shah. Did you know that like, Iran during Reza Shah's time, before the Islamic Revolution, it was illegal for people to wear the hijab in public. So Iran went for Iran went from the only country, and I, I don't endorse this, I'm against this by the way, but I'm just telling you how anti-Islamic Iran was. Iran went from the only country in the world where hijab was illegal in public to now the only country in the world where hijab is mandatory for everyone in public, including non-Muslims and foreigners. Right? That's a huge shift, right? But and nobody during Ataturk's or Reza Shah times could predict that this, these countries will become so as Islamic as they are today, especially with Iran. The thing is that when you have a shitty ideology that you're defeating it and it's, it's now in the corner and it's, and it's on its back, and you, it, it, it will put on a mask. It will put on a mask to look like it's not harmful because it's about to be defeated. And when it puts on a mask to, and... You know, and this is not because people in a room are coming up with, cons you know, uh, conspiracies on how to survive. This is just how the memes survive. It will just change the way it looks, mm -hmm. so that you, you, you have the beast, you have the sword, and you have your foot on its throat, and then all of a sudden it goes from looking like a beast to like a little, little cute puppy, and you step away. But no, when it's, when it's. That's the point where you actually put the sword in his head and end it in the job. That's not when you go back. Because guess what? Look at Iran today. Look at Turkey today. You don't let shitty ideas survive when they're harmless. Shitty ideas, lies, things that are not based on evidence, things that are based on faith and revelation. You go after them. You fight for the truth always. Not when it comes and bites you in the ass, because if you just let them fester, they will eventually be harmful. It's, this is a very simple, I'm not making an extraordinary claim. I'm claiming that if you fight for the truth, always, in the long run, you're going to see benefits. If you, if you just promote lies that may seem like a good idea in the short time, in the short time, you're going to see a good return on your investment. But in the long run, that's a bad strategy. It's always a good, well, it's often a better, um, I, would never, I don't want to say always. It's, it's usually a better idea to be on the side of the truth. Sure. Yeah. Regardless of the how harmful it is. That's why I will be as aggressively against palm reading as I am against Islam. Re aggressively against what? Oh, palm, palm reading. reading or zodiac signs like i will just i will be against those as well I, I don't wait i don't you know if if 
you know, you ha- the filter that you have to introduce to people is to the filter that you have for them to recognize what is bullshit and what is not bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. If you remove that filter and be like, after they pass that gate, once you open that gate, you don't really have that much control over where people land. If most people land on, you know, progressive or good ideas, it's because of their own sense of sympathy or other sorts of, you know, ideas. It's not because... It's not because you actually manage to, you know, if you don't give people better bullshit readers, you have lost them already. You know, you, you, you know, if you let these bad ideas just uh, people, you know, when people are gullible and if you, you're like, oh my God, these people are gullible. They're beyond hope. Let's just give them some shitty ideas that will be less harm, uh, harmful to us. These are people, gullibility can, is not something that people are, it's not like something that they're born with and it will always be like that. This is something that could be challenged, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and you don't have to completely make people not gullible. You can make them less gullible. I mean, for their sake, even if it's not for your sake, you know, somebody who's gullible is somebody that could be take advantage of, somebody that could be conned, somebody that could be convinced that they need to give away 10% of their income, somebody that could be convinced to vote for somebody that is that is not in their best interest. Somebody that could be recruited to to participate in someone's war. Um, somebody could that, that could might uh, elect a politician that bans vaccines because they cause autism or whatever, mm-hmm. right? So, um, I mean, even people like Islam, even if they, it's not just the suicide bombings or the wars. It's like it's a dad that is going to a mosque instead of spending time with his daughter. Right? It's the government that it all of a sudden decides to ban interest rate because they're un Islamic. The, the, you know, is religion fucks with our lives in much more, much, much more ways than it's just like a suicide bomber here or there. It is the more people have. Yeah, I, I, agree, this... I agree with all of this. I'm an yeah. atheist, right? Of okay, course. Okay. I, I think yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. As soon as you're susceptible to religious saying... thought, you, yeah, I, I don't disagree. I know you're an atheist. Mm-hmm. I, I know you're an atheist, but I'm just saying, like, we shouldn't treat people like, okay, I'm an atheist. Mm-hmm. I know what's right. But you idiots, you cannot be convinced of this. So I might as well just give you some, you know, fairy tale that makes you go sit in the corner and leave me alone. I just don't think that's the right attitude. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, sorry, I went for too long. No, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, I guess, yeah, I guess I kind of, I, I broadly understand. I guess I'd be curious to see, like, what, I guess, what ends up being more effective in the long term. I guess we'll see um, how things play out around the world. But We have the historical numbers to back us up, and we also have the current numbers to show our method is working better. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not just coming up with theories. Sure. Okay. I will put my numbers next to any Muslim reformist any day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, All right. What was the other? What was the second topic you wanted to chat about? Or the? Or I guess oh. you gave me a few, and then I picked two of them. Oh yeah, we. I was mentioning why Islam is even worse than even Nazism. Oh yeah, I mean, that we, seems like a hard one, but go for it. I mean, that's it's so obvious to me. Um, I mean, to be fair, I think if it is if Nazism as an ideology was able to survive as long as Islam was. It would be way more destructive, but I think like ideologies uh, such as like Nazism are weaker memes than Islam or Christianity. So the fact that they're weaker and they don't manage to survive as long is part of what makes them less dangerous. Oh, well, of course. I mean, that's kind of like when people say, like, the United States does more harm than any other country in the world. Well, that's true. The United States also does more good or charity than any other country in the world. But that's just because of the size of the country, right? Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's kind of, yeah, I mean, so it's, this, it's a, like a difference between, like, Islam versus Nazism is kind of like a, the Kalashnikov versus an atomic bomb. Sure. If you were using atomic bombs as much as a Kalashnikov, I'm pretty sure they would be a lot more devastating, yes. Sure, yeah. Uh, but, but Kalashnikovs uh, are way, uh, have a lot more vict- uh, victims than atomic bombs because they're just... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and part of the reason why Islam is a stronger meme is the fact that it manages to use... You know, there's you know a lot of more a lot more good people uh, to convince people um, that it's a legit you know mm-hmm. ideology. Like it, it's harder to convince good people that Nazism is a okay than Islam, and that's what makes Islam a lot more dangerous. And th- this is why Islam has like a whole bunch of sugar coating, and Christianity also too. Oh, love thy neighbor. Um, like Islam has, oh, yeah. take care of our friends. We probably don't disagree at all. It's just a way of framing it. So, like for instance, yeah. like um, like sugar is more dangerous than arsenic, 
Well, yeah. like, yeah, I mean, if you eat arsenic, you're probably going to die. But, I mean, right. like, sugar is more pervasive and more likely to be consumed by a person, right? Oh, so we agree then. Islam is more dangerous than Nazism. Well, yeah, I guess. It's just kind of a, it's a really, really, really inflammatory. Listen, I would say that's a dumb take, but on Twitter, I would probably tweet that. So, I, yeah, there you go. Well, the, let me tell you why it's not a dumb, it, uh, it's not uh, that dumb to say, because, you know, one thing that I try to do is not just to uh, convince Muslims. I also try to convince a whole bunch of anti-Muslim bigots um, in different ways of looking at Islam, to look at Islam as a disease and Muslims as a patient rather than the... Uh, Muslims as a disease themselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and and also tell them that you know actually the main victims of Islam are Muslims themselves. So we fight against Islam not for the sake of protecting the West. We say we fight against Islam for the sake because we care for Muslims, and they are you know uh, they are the main victims of Islam. Mm -hmm. And you know, and with with a title like that, I usually do attract a whole bunch of anti-Muslim bigots. Uh, and then when they read the com my comments or follow the video, they see actually I am very sympathetic to Muslims themselves, which does convince a couple of a few of them. I have seen a whole bunch of people, anti-Muslim bigots who have followed me for years, change their tune or their, view, their views a little bit. So I think that's also another form of activism, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people start following me because of my anti-Islam rhetoric, and then they see like my channel all of a sudden becomes focused. On, and we have like an atheist channel that constantly shits on China, uh, which is an atheist regime for the for the way they treat Muslims, right? Mm -hmm. Or we had a whole bunch of Hindus for people who really hate Muslims follow our channel because of our anti-Islam content, and now we're like attacking, you know, the BGP party in India for the way they treating Muslims, and we lose a lot of them, but some of them stay around and change their mind. So that's another reason why i might frame it like that mm -hmm. okay it's, it's, a, it's like a trap it's like a trick yeah sure to get yeah. You. <laughs> inflammatory yeah <laughs> right. right so uh, okay so that second part doesn't say, i mean doesn't seem that you know so you agree on that mm -hmm. okay good i mean th th by the way this was a lot more this was very productive i really enjoyed it because the your comebacks and the way you challenge my views is really sure. nice i enjoy that Okay. Um, yeah. Did you? Was this? How long have we been going? How's the live chat going? Um, they're cool. Yeah. It's about an hour. I don't. I, it, I don't mm. think fundamentally we probably don't disagree on much. Um, it, just though you phrase things in very, very, very aggressive ways, which I guess I do. <laughs> I do that online a lot too. So. Um, what? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, part of the reason, you know, the way I talk to Muslims is completely di different from when I talk about Islam to my atheist community mm -hmm. uh, you know when i talk to a muslim i become a lot more you know sympathetic and um you know i talk i don't talk to them as aggressively as i am talking to our community against islam because there's completely different reasons for example i have videos on on youtube on, on burning the quran mm -hmm. right um and you know, we had um, I have a video that went viral on Facebook that I went to Vancouver a, a gay pride parade and I had like a sign that saying Allah is gay. Uh, and the reason why I do those things is because people tell me that you can't or you shouldn't. And we're just trying to challenge, you know, the red lines that people keep drawing around certain things that we're not supposed to say or do. Those are mostly for that, for the sake of making sure that we nobody can tell us what to say and what not to say mm -hmm. um and also when you were talking to our atheist community against about islam and christianity that is not necessarily to change christians or muslims mind that's just basically us basing ba building an atheist community and talking about the things that we agree i mean if a Mus Mu muslims are uh, who are offended by that uh, we're not going to them with this content they if they are seeing this content it's because they chose to, to see it like they can't it. Go yeah. yeah so but but when, if I if my strategy is to actually convince a Muslim out of their position, I wouldn't use the same aggressive tactics against you know. Yeah, sure. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't say like, oh, why to a Muslim? Okay, tell me what you think about Islam. Why should I? Why should I question Islam? Oh, because Islam is worse than Nazism. That's why. Because like, I don't. I don't. Yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, how I, I talk. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um. What? Just curious. So, what is your particular background? You You're from Iran. Yes, I'm um, um, an ex-Muslim mm -hmm. uh, from Iran. I'm also Iranian Canadian. Right now, I live in the Philippines. Um, but yeah, actually, one reason 
one of my personal experiences is the reason why uh, I actually I use this story to make my case as well. Because when I was a kid, um, I was very scared of going to hell. I was very, and I couldn't understand why other people were not terrified. Like it seemed like everybody around me believed in hell, but nobody was that concerned about going there, yeah. even though it was a real possibility. Like people were were more more worried about their grades, careers, fashion cars or anything other like the next party next week but you know it seemed like people believe that there's this place that you're going to be screaming for a very very long time and angels are going to be torturing you and pouring molten lead down your throat but people didn't seem to be worried about going yeah this is actually described in the quran i do like yeah yeah so um i i remember crying about it and i remember my aunt actually finding out that you know this was pre-elementary school she told me don't worry Armin." only like rapists and murderers go to hell. But then when I actually went to school, in school they told us actually, no, most people, including most Muslims, are going to go to hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and and I, and I, my parents were nominal Muslims. They drank alcohol. They, they only went to a mosque only when somebody died or when somebody was getting married. They never fasted. They never prayed. Yeah. And I asked my teachers, are they going to go to hell? And they were like, yeah, they're going to go to hell, of course. Um, so I was very upset about that as well. And the thing that I learned in school was that, you know, for in Islam, there's no sin before age of maturity, right? The age of reason, mm-hmm. right? Um, again, this is many years later, I learned that Christianity is actually, you're born with sin, but this not, in Islam, that's not the case. In Islam, if you're a child, you cannot have sin because you're not mature enough to be held responsible for your, your actions, actions, right? Yeah. So... Um, you have to hit, hit the age of reason. And again, the, the specifics of this is different for, among Muslims, but the way we learned it in school is that the age of reason for boys is 15 and for girls is 9. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So that means yeah. that there's no way for, for me, there's no way for me to sin before age 15, right? Um, suicide is a sin in Islam. But then I put two and two together. I was like, well, suicide can't be a sin if I commit suicide before age 15. So I felt like I found a loophole in the system. I felt like, okay, if I kill myself before age 15, I die without sin, so I can't go to hell, so I end up in heaven. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't I just kill myself before age 15 and make sure I don't go to hell? So to make sure that I got this right, I went to my religious teacher and I'd ask him, why wouldn't I just kill myself to make sure that I don't go to hell? And he said, well, because if you go to heaven because you died as a child, you go to the lowest part of heaven. Because you didn't earn heaven. Yeah. Like, apparently heaven has different layers, and the best part is where the martyrs go, and that's where Muhammad is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the lowest part is where people go who died before they were getting the chance to sin. Um, I thought to myself, I don't give a fuck which part of heaven I go to. I just don't want to burn. I could take a, I, I could take a parking lot for eternity if that guarantees me not burning. I actually lit a match, and I put it on my arm, to see how much it hurts. Yeah. And then I imagine that like all over my body for five minutes. And I like, this is unimaginable pain. I can't tolerate this for five minutes. How could I tolerate this for thousands of years? Mm-hmm. So I jumped out of the window in my school. Uh, I broke both my legs. I broke my left arm. I fractured my back. I was in a wheelchair and, and my bed for like seven months. I missed one year of school. Um, the only reason why I didn't try it again is because I saw what it did to my parents. I saw my mom collapse in the ground in the hospital. I saw my dad cry for the first time. Mm-hmm. They blamed themselves because I didn't tell them why I did this. Um, but, yeah, and that's why I didn't try it. And when I hit age 15, I was like, shit, I have to play this game now because the consequences of losing is so high. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I need to be a proper Muslim now. So I became very religious. I lost a lot of friends because of that, because I was in the more liberal part of the city. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, I missed one year of school, so all my friends were in next grade anyways. And that loneliness made me even closer to God. Um, but, yeah, I mean, but but even to this day, I think my logic was sound, given the premises. If the premises were true, mm, my conclusion is flawless. And I couldn't understand why most mo- other people didn't come to the same conclusion as I have. Yeah, like, there's a lot where... of weird, like, religious loopholes like that. Um, for instance, like, yeah. I remember learning in school that um, it was impossible for you to go to hell 
you had never heard of God. Because one question people would always right. ask is like, well, what about all of the like Native Americans in the United States that have never heard of God? They're going to go to hell because they don't believe. And then the teacher right. would always be like, well, if they haven't heard of God, then they can't, you know, go to hell. And it's like, well, doesn't right. that make you like a huge lo- asshole if you like tell people about God <laughs> if they've never heard of him? Because now you've like, they had a 0% chance of going to hell before and now they, you know, they're fucked. Um, right. Yeah. Or in Catholicism, it's like, can I do any crime if I go and like do contrition afterwards? If I, you know, go to reconciliation and I say, I'm sorry, like, can I go do whatever? And then, yeah. Actually, the kindest thing to do is to go to all the people that haven't heard about Christ, if if any of this is true, mm-hmm. is to go kill all of them mm-hmm. before the missionaries get to them. Well, yeah, I mean, in some, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I mean, in some level, even like the suffering of those people was seen as like righteous and shit, anyway, right? But yeah, I mean, technically, mm-hmm. rules as written, it seems like that would be the case, yeah. Right. I mean, you would be like, oh, but you go to hell because you kill innocent people. Or, yeah, yes, I'm sacrificing my. Um, I'm sacrificing myself by going to hell, but saving a whole bunch of people but from going to hell by killing them. Mm-hmm. So you just like every single country that hasn't heard of Christ, just drop a nuke on them and save them from going to hell before the missionaries can go there and make hell a potential, <laughs> make it possible. I mean, this would be the this would be the most utilitarian conclusion that you come up with if you wanted to take all of these ideas. This is a problem with shitty ideas. Shitty, shitty premises, if you apply good logic to, to bad premises, you have to come up to really weird and bad conclusions. The only way you can start with bad premises and get to good conclusions is, is to encourage bad logic. Mm-hmm. Right? This is why I'm saying like att- attack the premises itself rather than trying to get to good conclusions by promoting bad logic. It's a methodology that matters, not the conclusion. Mm -hmm. Promote proper methodology rather than good conclusions, right? And religions sometimes randomly come to good conclusions, but if you use those good conclusions as a way to promote a bad methodology, a methodology that more often gives you bad answers. So those yeah, those small good conclusions are actually makes the religion more dangerous because now they could be used as marketing tactic for a bad methodology. Mm-hmm. And it, like also the scientific method or using logic and reason and evidence based or reason and stuff, those are good methodologies, but they don't always give you good answers. Sometimes they give you bad answers. And who are people who are against the scientific method, they use those bad examples bad answers like oh look science is responsible for this or that uh, as to to market against a a superior methodology. Mm-hmm. So again, this is why I'm saying like, don't look at the conclusions, one or two conclusions, the average conclusions of the scientific method is superior to the conclusions of religion and faith. So, you know, don't be like, Oh, let's promote, you know, Muslims who are using Islam to support gay, gay marriage, because by doing that, you're using a good conclusion to, to promote a bad methodology. Sure. The methodology matters more than the conclusion. For always, yeah, of course. So that you can yeah. get good conclusions in the future, right? More often, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I almost died because of these bad methodologies. What are, what are you playing? I can't see. Um, I can't open it because I have a, I have a crappy computer, so if I open this and... Oh, no, right now my stream is just all they can see is my camera and your camera, basically. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. What is the live chat saying? I wish I could see. <laughs> I wish I could um, see some, anybody. If I anybody think most is. of them agree with what you're saying. I mean, like I, we're, like I said, we're basically on the same page with everything. Um, you're saying right. a lot of the stuff that I'd normally say where the idea is that basically, um, uh, th- like, thought processes are more important than conclusions because you're trying to predict future thoughts, right? So if somebody yeah. uses a bad methodology to get to some conclusion, that doesn't matter because they might make a bad conclusion in the future. So you ought to promote good methodologies rather than just answers, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and this we had Sam Harris on our podcast, Secular Jihadist podcast, mm-hmm. and he told me, uh, you know, he's for Islamic reform. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he said, he said exactly this. He said, if we could just invent a new religion that is almost as bad as Islam, but it's just ten percent less bad, that's progress. Mm-hmm. And that's not. I, I don't agree with that because that again, that's basically promoting the right conclusions rather than. The methodology itself. Mm-hmm. If you know the method, you know if you have ten percent less bad Islam and be like, oh, that's progress. You are actually using those ten percent better ideas to promote Islam, and Islam is the wrong methodology, right? So, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm against Islam. No matter how, if you had, if you came up with a religion 
that was based on faith and God and revelation that was 100% peaceful. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any violence in it. Um, in fact, it was very pro-humanity, pro-equal like equal rights and all that good stuff, everything. Everything that we see as you know, Enlightenment values. So let's have a religion that ha all the values from the Enlightenment era, mm -hmm. it promoted all of that. But the reason why it promoted all of that was because it came from God. It was a revelation from God that these are superior values. Mm -hmm. That is dangerous. Because now you're promoting a methodology that some other people... Like, imagine if you find a napkin in a bar that said, like, um, I don't know, behead people who don't believe in the napkin religion. Mm -hmm. And then you went to... You went and said... Somebody like, okay, I'm going to follow this religion. I'm going to go behead anybody that doesn't believe in it. And you went to them and like, listen, no, 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 no. Let's reread this. Maybe by killing means I kill them with love. Just love them to death and bring them to the napkin religion by that. Like, obviously it doesn't mean that, but let's just try. Let's try. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You're encouraging people to just believe in random napkins that they find in a bar. You know, you should be tackling that. You should be like, "What? Why the fuck are you just following this random napkin? This is not the right way." That's yeah, I, I understand. Anyways, yeah, of course, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyways, I think we we covered. Unless you have more questions. Um. No, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it just comes off as like, um, or, or I guess it just comes out to like. I guess whichever ends up being more successful in converting people. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah. I'm massively in favor. If if you can get people to abandon like irrational thought processes, I'm always in favor of that. It just seems like really difficult to do with large groups of people. But I mean, if yeah, if that's the way forward, then that'd be great. Yeah. I mean, we 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 can't expect dramatic shifts mm -hmm. all of a sudden. Sure. We make gradual changes. Yeah, of right. Course, yeah. So. When people say like, "Oh, your method is not going to give you like, oh, it's not going to make the whole world atheist. It's not going to convince two billion Muslims out of Islam, mm -hmm. are men." I like, I didn't never said it does. I'm just saying it works better. It's is much superior than the reform movement. Mm -hmm. In fact, the reform movement is not less helpful. It's unhelpful, mm -hmm. right? I mean, as, you know, say like, okay, give me a give me a better alternative. I'm yes, I it's good. We I'm not I'm not going to convince. Uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people by next week, mm -hmm. we are going to make gradual changes, but our gradual change is the fastest one. It is gradual, but it's the best one. Encouraging skepticism, encouraging uh, critical thinking, encouraging people to, even who are not skeptical, to accept people with different views. Those are, those work. It's gradual. It's not going to give you atheists overnight but all change is gradual. Mm -hmm. And it's intellectually honest. That's the most important thing. Like, why would you lie to people? This is atheists. I mean, this is why I get pissed of atheists who support Islamic reform because they're actively supporting lying to people. Mm -hmm. Muslims who are for Islamic reform, I don't get uh, that triggered by them because they at least believe in their own nonsense. Sure. Yeah. yeah. By the way, guys, um, if you can, I. Plug yeah, plug your yeah, your website or your Facebook or whatever. Yeah, check out Atheist Republic. We're a 501c. Uh, we're the world's largest atheist community. Um, we really do need help on YouTube. We, uh, you know, our it's funny because our we have a Persian channel, which we make uh, English channel and Persian channel. I make content for um, Iranian atheists as well. Mm -hmm. um, and our Persian channel, even though it's much more recent and much more smaller. It's getting a lot more views uh, than our English channel because I think the, all the things uh, the, that triggers YouTube algorithm for why our content shouldn't be shared or recommended, mm -hmm. uh, they don't have Persian triggers for that. I think they only have like English, and that's why our our Persian channel is not getting as deprioritized. Sure. Yeah. As what our is English the channel. What's the channel for your YouTube? What's it called? Oh, Atheist Republic. Okay, gotcha. Atheist if they Republic. search for okay, gotcha. We'll link it in chat. Wait, I'm just curious. Um, there's a guy that I know online called Ask Yourself. Um, oh yeah, he does. He doesn't like me. <laughs> you talked to this guy about veganism. How did that conversation go? I, I mean, I he really disliked what I said. He goes, he was very offended, and he got so triggered. He hung up on me. I don't know what I did, but and we agreed before uh, going 
before going on live with before starting a discussion with him before rec- it wasn't live we were just he was recording mm-hmm. uh that he's going to release a video um and I'm like, okay so you're recording i don't have to record and he's like yeah don't worry about it i'll record it and i'm like are you sure and i made sure like he's going to do it and he recorded it but he was so upset with me at the end of the discussion that he didn't release it and they're like okay can you send me a copy i release it and like no f- go fuck yourself or something like that and i honestly i didn't really try to i kept on saying like w- even during the discussion when i seeing he was getting so worked up i'm like i'm sorry i don't mean to make you upset but he was so upset i mean even after uh, uh, the discussion was up- over i messaged him um i was like sorry that you uh, on facebook i like i'm sorry that you make you upset that was not my intention and he's like oh he said go fuck yourself so what was he, he so didn't like what I, um i guess well i mean i don't want to strawman him you know so i um, i could tell you i mean but i maybe he goes upset that my uh, okay so the conclusions that i come to uh, my my values for animals and humans were kind of consistent mm-hmm. so when when he came up with examples that makes the humans comparable to animals in those conditions i kind of accepted that in those situations it would be okay to kill humans and eat them as well but we don't live in that world that those conditions are met uh-huh. but then he came to the conclusion that i'm the way he framed it is like you're a for holocaust of disabled people who are not self-aware i was like and i told him well i don't like that framing of it this is how i frame it and he's like well and he said well your my framing of it is accurate and I was like, well, my framing of it is accurate as well. He's like, no, you're sugarcoating your position. I'm like, well, you call it sugarcoating, but well, the way I'm saying it is also completely accurate, completely represents what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But but the, the, world that, the world that I said that I would be okay with is not the world that we live in. Like, we have to change too many factors for us to be able to be okay with killing humans without pain and eat the meat. and everything yeah. like yes so many things had to change for that condition to be met but yet he said like oh my framing of it is for you to you're okay with the holocaust of disabled people mm-hmm. and the, i was challenging and he got so worked up and he hung up on me and he like i'm not going to release the video <laughs> all right well <laughs> like and he said thank you for wasting two hours of my time or something like that yeah I wasn't. I really wasn't trying to make him upset. I was really not. I, I mean, I'm. Um, I I was. I think I was very polite. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't. I, but he just didn't like my position. He's a pretty if, passionate, like vegan guy. So it means a lot to him. I think the arguments do. I mean, if I was so wrong, he might as well release the video to show to embarrass me. Like if he thinks like I'm so. Um, I mean, if I was that bad. It's good for him to show it to show how non-vegans, how bad my arguments was against veganism. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand. Like, yeah. Anyway, true. Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> um, right. We yeah. I'm, he's he's like he's a pretty famous like internet debater guy. So it's just kind of funny. He gets like really mad pretty often at a lot of things. So. Yeah, but I'm still. I mean, even I'm still. I mean, if he's listening to this, I apologize. I apologize to him if I made him upset i was not intending to do that at all so okay. there, there was that all right cool. i mean well, i am getting i am getting into debating against vegans more mm-hmm. uh, so if any any vegans wants to any um, invite me to their channel um i would be interested in that are you a vegan no i'm not no okay okay yeah all right. Well, hey, listen. Thanks. I appreciate the conversation. It's been fun. Yeah, this was fun. This is very. I really like your takes. Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, All right. I, I think um, we've got your like your YouTube stuff and everything, and your website uh, is linked in the chat, and then it'll probably be linked in the YouTube video, I imagine, as well. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good luck with your mission. Um, I mean, if we disagree, it's literally only on what looks the best on the optics. Like, I don't disagree with your messaging, your ideas at all. So, yeah. yeah. Strategy. 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 Yeah, yeah, I would be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. Talk well, we, to you soon. Yeah. I mean, maybe talk to you again yeah. at some point. Thanks a lot, man. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.